thank you for coming to speak to us today. Thank um, you for having me. Yes. Um, Donnie Darko is widely regarded as a cult classic, and it's the film, you, your debut feature, you made when you were about 26 years old. Mm -hmm. Could you have imagined then that 15 years later it would be being celebrated at the British Film Institute? I, I am uh, continually fascinated by the longevity of this film, and that it continues to resonate with people, and it's inspiring, and it gives me renewed faith every single day that I see people rediscovering this film or passing it along to a friend or, you know, embracing it again and again and again. And um, that just gives me a new lease on life and it makes me want to continue to make original films and to keep uh, fighting the good fight, I guess, you know? So it's, it's, it's really wonderful to see people continue to be passionate about this film and now 15 years later we've done this restoration and it looks better than ever and it finally looks the way it was really intended to look I think. Mm. But why re-release it now of all times? Well you know we have these arbitrary anniversaries you know 10 years or 15 years and it's really um, it's really just about uh, I think the technology we have now to do a 4k restoration to scan the negative and use our great digital tools to go in and make the film and the celluloid look the way it's capable of looking. And um, when Arrow contacted me and said they wanted to, to do it, I had a window of availability and they were ready to roll up their sleeves and, and get to work. And, and so Stephen Poster, my cinematographer and I, we really wanted to be involved in this restoration because it's a once in a lifetime opportunity and films can be uh, ignored and they can decay and they can um, deteriorate. And so we have the tools at our disposal to preserve them now and, and it, it felt right. The film itself, it's a real treasure trove for like people who love to find a film where they can untangle the plot mm -hmm. and find hidden meanings. And there's, there's websites dedicated to saying, what, what is Donnie yeah. Darko really about? Yeah. Um, so for you, I mean, what is, what is Donnie Darko about for you? Is there a central thing? The film is about life. Uh, it's about the complexity of life. It's about a boy becoming a man. It's about a man confronting himself. It's about the death of the Reagan era. Yeah, it's about uh, a, a whole lot of things. But part of what's essential for me is it's not about any one thing, right? It's about a broad spectrum of the human experience. And it can't just be reduced to a single explanation. And that's what I'm most proud of is that you can continually get lost in it and try to navigate your way through the story again and again and again and hopefully see something new every single time. Mm, definitely, I, I would say that that's what it gives. Yeah. Um, also, time travel and kind of the apocalypse <laughs> yeah. uh, a, theme, theme, a theme in the film, but it's also appeared in other films of yeah. yours. Are they something that, are, are they particularly fascinating to you or do you think they make particularly good um, themes for films? I think we confront the apocalypse every day. Right. Sadly, I think every day in the year 2016, everyone has um, felt a lot of apocalyptic doom and gloom in the air. And um, if cinema can help us process that pain or that grief or that anxiety, then that's a healthy thing, I think. Yeah. and if we can confront our destiny as a as a, a species or as a as a nation as a, as a, a global community through these stories that um, explore the end of the world or uh, utilize something like time travel as a way to reverse engineer tragedy or uh, regret or um, some sort of uh, election, then that can be cathartic and that can help us process um, 
mistakes or, or, or we can fix things in cinema that we can't fix in real life, you know. Um, we can undo tragedy in cinema, but sadly in life we, we don't have those tools. Uh, we, we don't have a time machine in real life, you know. So um, I just want cinema, cinema to be cathartic and I want the, the films that I make ultimately to be cathartic for people. Mm. I mean, when it initially came out in 2001, um, it didn't do too well in cinemas. Yeah. And a lot of people put that down to, well, in America anyway, down to the fact it came out just after 9-11. Um, yeah. And then it kind of found success over here in Britain. Mm -hmm. Do you think there's something about British audiences? I mean, why why did they take to this film? You know, you can hindsight is always twenty twenty, right? But this film, it needed to... It needed to have time to marinate in people's minds. And it came out on DVD in the US. And I think people in the UK started to watch it on DVD. Mm -hmm. And word started to spread. And then it came out in theaters a year later over here. And so it had time to marinate. And I think it might have something to do with the music in the film too. It's all British musicians. And we didn't really plan it that way. It just it was sort of this post-punk British new wave thing that was happening with all, with the soundtrack, and perhaps it was the music that really helped connect to British audiences, and because it is such an American high school story, right? But there's something universal about Donnie's journey into um, this science fiction world that is very much grounded in the, in the American suburbs. But it's a human experience, and everyone can feel alienated or everyone can try and confront hypocrisy or, or, you know, experience the challenges that Donnie experiences. Those, those are universal challenges, right? And they're not specifically American, even though the story takes place in America. So I'm just incredibly honored that, that audiences in the UK respond so well to this film because it just, it makes me feel like what I'm doing is perhaps a universal narrative approach. Mm. Um, I think that's what's quite interesting about the film. It kind of reinvigorates the kind of the American high school teen, moody teenager mm -hmm. cliche, makes it into something well, a lot weirder um, yeah, yeah. and interesting. A lot of that down is down to perhaps uh, Jake Gyllenhaal's performance as Donnie. Did you know then, or could you tell that he would be, go on to become, you know, a star that, that he's become? I mean, right when I met Jake, I knew right away that he was Donnie, and he had the part if he wanted it. And um, it was very clear when we were on set that he was enormously talented and that he was giving 110%, that he was so emotionally invested in playing this character and navigating the complexities of Donnie's arc, which are like a roller coaster ride. You know, this is a, a wild ride for a character to go on. And, we shot a lot of the movie out of sequence, and that, that's really difficult to do for an actor. And so every day we had to constantly find that specific place, what happened before and what happened after. You know, we, we had to anchor Jake's emotional arc so that it was accurate to, to Donnie's emotional arc, you know? And so it wasn't until later that he he said to me, I think when we wrapped production, he said, you know, Richard, I was just imitating you the whole time. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> you bastard? No, but it was, um, it was a, a, a wonderful collaboration. And so I'm, I'm lucky to have gotten Jake in this role, really. Mm. Do you think you could make a film like Donnie now? Or was it necessarily something of your younger directorial self? It was definitely a film made by someone uh, who had everything to lose, but also nothing to lose. Uh, and the risks that I took when I was 25 years old making this film aren't necessarily risks I would take today, but that's what happens when you give a 25 year old uh, the money to make a, a movie. You know, they're, they're gonna take some crazy risks. But again, I think some of these risks are essential and or what make the film resonate, right? So um, I'm just, again, grateful that I got the opportunity and, um, and that we're still here talking about it is just incredibly fascinating and, and rewarding 
to, to know that, um, that you can do something unconventional and that it will find its way and, and that it will endure, you know. Mm. Well, brilliant. Thank you very much. Thank it's you. It's been a pleasure talking okay, to you. Okay, thank you so much.